coming up. Hallucinations, bad transportation, and oral fixations. Also, the Pentecostal Meth Revival. We'll make a collect call on the number of the geeks, and, by gosh and begora, we'll crack open the rusty mail crypt to answer your questions on Ask the Goat. All this and more on this professionally inept episode of Kiss the Goat. Satanic Cinema have opened, and all are welcome in the dark. Please take care not to slip in the kitchen, especially back where Stephanie spilled some Chardonnay on the stone floor. Where is Stephanie, anyway? She's being punished for her clumsiness. I had to lock her in the dank cellar to teach her a lesson. Oh, I get that. What kind of terrible thing are you going to do to her? 24 hours of Hallmark movies. I got the TV remote up here on my desk, and the TV plug is super glued into the outlet. She's stuck. Wow. After an entire day of nothing but rom-coms and Christmas movies, she's going to be a drooling mess. That'll teach her to spill things. All that televised sorghum sweetness is going to make Stephanie's brain start to drip from her nose. Hey, this is episode 53 of Kiss the Goat, and welcome to it. Cootie and I are going to talk about a bizarre Mario Bava flick during movie time. And we also plan on getting progressively drunker as the show goes on, so that by the time we get to the Ask the Goat segment, well, we should be good and lit. But let's kick things off with the devil in the details, our roundup of snippets of Satan stuff. This episode's story took place in April in Carryville, Tennessee, which is really quite close to us. Yeah, for those who don't know, the Shrine to Satanic Cinema is located in the dark, eldritch woods of East Tennessee, and Carryville is maybe half an hour away from where we live. Is it Carryville? Carryville? Car- Carryville? Maryville? If it's Maryville, then it's Carryville. <laughs> Carryville. <laughs> There's only one fucking letter difference. Well, being a massively conservative Christian area, it's not unusual for Satan to take the blame for a lot of criminal mischief around here. Michelle Johnson, a 38-year-old Carryville resident, was discovered wandering through the town of La Follette and peeking into the windows of a home unbeknownst to the people who lived there. And Johnson even tried to open the door. It doesn't seem like she was trying to rob the place, but I could be wrong. She might have wanted to raid the house's liquor cabinet. (laughs) Who the hell has a liquor cabinet? Who has a liquor cabinet now? Is it a thing? I don't know, man. Booze doesn't last long enough around here to bother stocking up a liquor cabinet. Maybe a shelf. A liquor shelf. At the very least, a dedicated section of the kitchen counter. I mean, just keep that stuff close to where we sit so we don't have to get up while we're watching the TV. Exactly. Well, regardless, Johnson was apparently super drunk when the police showed up. When one of the officers asked if she was all right, Johnson reportedly answered, I'm being electrocuted by Satan. He's right behind me. You have to help. <laughs> So Satan has a taser, which you know he needs for crowd control. It's a less than lethal weapon. I mean, why would Satan need a taser? Couldn't he just shoot electricity out of his fingertips? I mean, he's not Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine? Palpatine? Ovaltine? 
Star Wars okay. guy. Emperor Ovaltine. <laughs> but I mean, you don't know that. He might be. Just using his pseudonym. Well, yeah. Satan, also known as. I don't know. Tommy? Becky? Did you see Becky fire purple bolts of lightning into Pastor McDonald's back during the PTO meeting? That was a hell of a thing. <laughs> okay, to be fair, we don't know precisely how Satan was electrocuting Johnson, but we do know that the only person behind Johnson was a sheriff's deputy. Well, maybe the deputy was Satan. Well, seems like that would have come up during the hiring process. Okay, look, I'm not sure if all cops are bastards, as some people like to say, but I think it's highly possible that some cops are the devil. Johnson was not stable on her feet, and she reportedly started speaking unintelligibly. You mean like speaking in tongues? Well, I mean, I guess that's what happens when Satan's blasting your back with electricity. <laughs> oh, you've blasted my back before. Well, yeah, but not with... I mean... I didn't touch a bare lamp wire to your spine. <laughs> oh, we would have to have a conversation about that. I mean, if you were actively trying to kill me. Well, Johnson is no stranger to people allegedly trying to kill her. In November 2020, Johnson was arrested after telling police that she had been shot. Yep. And after looking for Johnson at one location, police located the woman inside a different building. Johnson said to the responding officers that she had quote, a blue light in her eye and had been shot in the leg and Jesus healed her, end quote. So why didn't Jesus stop Satan from electrocuting her? Well, I, I guess he wasn't in town at the time. Ah, uh, yeah. Probably deciding which football teams are going to win their upcoming games. So many sports prayers to filter through. Also, Johnson told the police that she had taken meth earlier that day. <laughs> That might explain the blue light. There was also no reported sign that she had actually been shot. Well, of course not. Jesus healed her. Well, in both instances, Johnson was arrested for public intoxication. But here's the weird part. As of the April incident, Johnson had been arrested 80 times. 80! She's only reportedly 38 years old. That roughly equals to being arrested two times a year since the day she was born. That might be some kind of record. I mean, I've never been arrested. Should I feel some kind of shame about that? Like, does that somehow grate against my masculinity? Like, God damn it, I've tried to get arrested and nothing happened. But this woman, 80 times? I feel personally attacked. Does she keep getting out? Like, who's posting bail for this woman? Uh, family members, maybe? Maybe it's Satan. She seems to be a fine target for the devil. Well, especially if he can get away with electrocuting her. Let this woman out of jail and back onto the streets. I've got a tear gas gun I need to try out. <laughs> well, kids, that's it for the devil in the details. It sounds like a story that will be retold from the pulpits of Pentecostal preachers for years to come. Y'all better get right with the Lord before Satan electrocutes y'all on the back. <laughs> but again, she was speaking in tongues. Maybe she is Pentecostal. Dude, that concept <laughs> of Pentecostals on meth is a gigantic thing to wrap your head around. Imagine a Pentecostal meth revival. Jesus Christ, that thing would last for days. And then clean the venue, just spotless. <laughs> and then somebody's going to shit in the corner, and the whole thing would go right back downhill. Yeah, but it's okay. Jesus will heal all of them after Rufus whips out his nine mil and starts shooting people in the leg during the Pentecostal meth revival, which, I mean, let's face it, that should be a yearly event. We should schedule it. Just book it and see who shows <laughs> up. <laughs> Y'all, come on down to the Pentecostal Meth Revival. We got syringes and orange juice. Uh, but we should do that after movie time because this flick feels like a bad drug trip. And, you know, I know people say that about surreal movies pretty often. But this movie? Yee. All right, all right. Save your ranting. Shh. It's movie time.
This week, we've gone back to Italy for Mario Bava's 1973 movie, Lisa and the Devil. Mm-hmm. I noticed you haven't tried to speak Italian during this episode. Well, the episode ain't over yet. <laughs> Lisa and the Devil stars Elkie Summer as Lisa. Now, Summer made some very good films during her career, but I remember her mainly for her seemingly constant appearances on game shows during the 1970s, particularly the Hollywood Squares. The movie also stars Telly Savalas, who became a megastar as the titular character in the 1970s police drama Kojak. He was also known for sucking on lollipops as a means to stop smoking. Oh, Savalas also played the asshole stepfather in the old Twilight Zone episode, Living Doll. I'm talking Tina, and I don't like you very much. Why does Talking Tina sound like Gollum? Because that's how Talking Tina sounds! Right. And not to mention, this is the second movie in a row that features Alita Valley in a supporting role. Miss Tanner from Suspiria, the faithful domestic from the Antichrist. This was not an intentional choice, mind you. We were delightfully surprised to see her in Lisa and the Devil. I kind of just want to watch every single movie Valley is in now. Because she's been the bright spot in damn near every movie we've seen that she was in. Now, X and I took a bit of a different approach to watching Lisa and the Devil. Because, you know, a lot of times we've got a difficult time remembering the names of characters or the actual chronology of events in the movies. And while that can be fun, it sometimes makes following along with the episode difficult. So Cootie and I took the brave step of watching Lisa and the Devil stone cold sober. Cootie was drinking a sparkling water, and I was enjoying a large glass of sweet tea. And it didn't matter. (laughs) Like, I remember Lisa's name, maybe a couple of others, and that's it. And while I took a lot more notes about this movie than I normally do, they didn't really help. I do know that Shudder describes this movie as, quote, a confounding labyrinth of mystery, end quote. Which really is just a flowering way of saying this movie isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, and the odds are really high that it sucks. Let us remind you, Lisa and the Devil is roughly 48 years old. And therefore, we feel no moral or ethical compunction to keep every secret about this movie. So in other words, we're going to spoil it from here to the back of beyond. This is your chance to fast forward through this segment on the off chance that you have always wanted to watch Lisa and the Devil and don't want to know what happens. But for the rest of you... Let's get to it. Now, the film opens with one of the oddest credit sequences I've ever seen. It feels like a 1970s Saturday night drama, as pictures of members of the cast are revealed on playing cards by this weird, kind of strangely jerky, almost like bad stop-motion animation hand. Like... James Bond I, Jr. or something. I was going to say, it was like some kind of like B-grade James Bond movie. That's exactly what that evoked. For oh, me. it's terrible. It's like, well, if you're learning how to play Baccarat, please take this card with Elkie Summer's picture on it. And like, what the fuck did that have to do with the movie? I don't get it. Because they weren't even like tarot cards. They were just playing cards which I know that you can use as sort of tarot cards, but I guess it was just like, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have, I I had, I had an answer and I fucked it up. So never mind. Elkie Summer, who plays Lisa, gets off of a tour bus. I wonder if she was on the same tour bus that was in the Antichrist, which we covered on our last episode, because that would be, a surprisingly weird crossover. Just meld that DiMartino and Bava universe together. Just just smack him on the ass like a crying baby. You know, that might have actually made a watchable movie. It could have. Would, yeah. Would, would have, would the, like the anti-Lisa? Is that what that would have been? <laughs> Lisa and the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, shit. I'd have been okay with that. Yeah. It was like... 73? Yeah, Jamie Gillis would have been in that fucking movie. Anyway, 
Um, the group, the tour group, is directed towards a fresco, which purports to show the devil doing something. Is he carrying bodies off to Hades? Like, He's carrying bodies. He's bringing out your dead. But the devil looks exactly like Telly Savalas. Does he? He does. He looks marginally like Telly Savalas. He looks like Telly Savalas with fucking golem ears. Just those it, weird... Yeah, it's true. He's got pointy fucking ears. Really point, like, like open an envelope with them ears. I don't know. I think the only like character is the only thing <laughs> that makes those two look similar is the fact that they're both fucking bald. Maybe the nose is the same. I don't know. I think they have that same lascivious kind of I need a lollipop look. Ugh. So maybe the devil just really likes I don't know blow pops. I guess. Lisa wanders away from the group, like you do, and she winds up in this curiosity shop. She sees a music box she likes, and that's fine. That'll show up later. But the shopkeeper is working on a life-sized mannequin of a mustachioed man for Telly Savalas. When Lisa backs away and leaves the store, the shopkeeper says, Well, you'd think she'd seen the devil. <laughs> Yeah, it's like she saw Telly Savalas and was like, holy shit, I remember this from the 30 seconds of the tour that I actually attended. Why does she... Because <laughs> she does. I'm, she stands I mean... there long enough to hear the tour guide tell them that the fresco was a painting of the devil. So you have and to then ass- she walks away. You have to assume that she's just trying to find a place to pee. Right. I mean, well, she's I mean, just she's just trying to find a toilet. But you know what? In this whole movie, she never fucking stops to pee. Not one time. Not that we see, anyway. So even though Lisa was only in that shop for maybe five minutes, when she gets back outside, the town is deserted. And the few people that acknowledge her presence just refuse to speak with her. Lisa gets disrespected by an entire fucking town. She does, and she gets all turned around. Well, the bitch makes a wrong turn, first of all. How is there a wrong turn? It was either left or right. Exactly. She made a right into the shop, so she should have made a left when she came out the door. But bitch makes a right, so she just wanders deeper into this little town. So according to Looney Tunes logic, she should have wound up in Albuquerque. Yeah, well, she didn't make that left turn in Albuquerque, did she? She did not. However... Telly Savalas finds her, and he's carrying the music box and the dummy, except the dummy is obviously a real guy. But then it turns back into a mannequin. It almost feels like some kind of continuity mistake. Now, to make things worse, Lisa is accosted by a stranger who calls her Elena, and he seems to be overjoyed that she has finally returned. Lisa, of course never been to this town before, doesn't know who the fuck this guy is, so in self-defense or in some kind of weird knee-jerk reaction, she pushes his ass down the stone steps and kills him? And why doesn't she, she says like three words in the first like 20 minutes of this fucking movie. Like she doesn't say a word. The only thing she says to the shopkeeper is how much is the music box? And then she just kind of, uh until she gets out of there (laughs) and then when this dude like starts calling her elena she doesn't say a fucking word she there is no um you must be mistaken my name is not elena no she just uh, uh, and backs away from him (laughs) and then pushes the poor sod down the stairs it's like a michael dudikoff movie she may as well just throat punched him so weird. So he lands at the bottom of the stairs, and his pocket watch falls out of his suit jacket, and the hands of the watch have stopped in the sign of the cross. What time is that? The sign of the cross? How did you... Because they did... look like a crucifix. How do watch hands do that, though? I. That's why I don't know what time it is, except, you know, A.D. A.D. <laughs> AD who's he? Right. <laughs> So Lisa keeps wandering about this Italian town until the sun goes down, and finally, she's able to flag down a car. 
Now, the car is occupied by characters whose names I neither remember nor care about. It's not that I forgot, mind you. I just don't give a shit. So in the car is an old dude, a pretty lady who's obviously the old dude's wife, and the chauffeur. I now, remember the chauffeur's name was George. Okay, f- who fucking cares? Okay, he's well, just the chauffeur. Well, I just remember... <laughs> I just remember because his name is called so many fucking times. That's true. Okay, fair. a pretentious rich couple. Fair enough. Now, once Lisa gets in the car, no one says anything. Nope. But what we get is a series of close-ups on the passengers' faces. Slow zooms, a shot of Lisa in the rearview mirror. Not only is Lisa's presence in the car just hella awkward... But the choice of shots presented during this sequence is also awkward. It's like the shittiest Italian Western movie you can imagine. Just, and there's somebody's face. There's somebody else's face. (laughs) There's their eyes. It's awful. Somebody fucking say something and break this horrific silence. Nobody talks in this movie. So the car overheats, and the old dude and the pretty lady get frustrated. Now, when the pretty lady tries to get out of the car, she doesn't know how car doors work. Nope. George, how does this open? George, open the door. Now, luckily, they've stopped in front of a mansion, and when they knock on the door for help to look for a phone or whatever, who should open the door but Telly motherfucking Savalas? He is everywhere in this movie of course there's no phone and there's no hotel nearby so you know stay for dinner why not and then suddenly while she's standing outside the car some handsome dude sneaks up behind lisa and tells her to stay because he's so lonely and apparently sexually frustrated now handsome dude's mother who is played by alita valley again because why not doesn't want company But the handsome dude talks her into it, so Mother agrees to serve her unwanted guests some dinner so they can stay in the cottage. Telly Zavallis offers Lisa a lollipop, which she declines. His name is Maximilian. And I don't... The the handsome handsome dude? dude? I don't really think he's handsome. He's the handsomest dude in the movie, and I can't call him Maximilian because I just think of the killer robot with rose... Fucking razor blades coming out of his shoulders in from the black hole. From remember the big killer robot, the black hole, named Maximilian. No. You don't remember the black hole? No, but no, I don't think he's handsome like a fucking serial killer. Handsome. He's like really intense and like really awkwardly. He's swarthy. Emotional. (laughs) And again. Lisa says dick. To the swarthy, handsome dude? She says dick. She just looks at him. (laughs) I'd be like, um, you're happy I'm here? The fuck, dude? You don't know me? There are no stairs for her to push the handsome dude down. Because I think that's her go-to, is just pushing people down the fucking stairs. (laughs) There are plenty of stairs inside the mansion. While old dude goes off to take a bath... Pretty lady and the chauffeur commence to boinkin. Lisa's in her room and she accidentally knocks a pocket watch off of the desk, which stops at the same time of the watch of the guy that she pushed down the steps earlier. All of a sudden, all the doors slam shut by themselves and the windows are locked. And then she sees the guy that she may or may not have killed outside her bathroom window. And then she runs out of the room. Now, fuck if I know how the doors got unlocked. But she makes it all the way out of the building and she runs off into the forest where she is chased by the potentially dead dude. But it's not really the dead dude. It's just the mannequin that looks like the dead dude. And the handsome dude tells her that the villa is full of mannequins. Why is the house full of fucking mannequins? Who does that? What kind of fucking Chuck Connors tourist trap bullshit is this? And already, you have no idea what the fuck is happening. I mean, it's... Is this another goddamn reincar- reincarnation movie? It that- probably is! But it's never made clear! Now, the handsome dude tells Lisa he's happy that she has returned. 
again, she's never been there before. And this is the second guy who has mistaken Lisa for someone else within the span of about six hours. This time, though, Lisa almost makes out with the handsome dude, but they are caught by Mother. Now, keep in mind, handsome dude's in his late 20s, easily. This should not be a situation that concerns a mother in any way, shape, or form. But she's overbearing. <laughs> a bit. Now, inside the house, everyone gathers for dinner, and one of the main things that we see is this gigantic taxidermied rabbit looming over the buffet. Now, I don't know if they were eating rabbit during dinner, but it's just like right there, like this kind of fucking shrine to water ship down. It's awful. So, was it taxidermy? Or were they like, I got the impression that it was like part of the meal. Well, it still got fucking fur on it. Yeah, that's true. It did. That'd be it like, was very weird. That'd be like serving a fish that's still got scales and it's flopping around. I well, mean, I mean, they serve fish all the time with the head and shit still on it. Yeah, but it ain't moving. I mean, you've broiled well, there, that shit. That was not the a bro- rabbit wasn't moving either. Yeah, that's why I think. Well, yeah, but it still had fucking fur. That's why I don't think it was, you know, broiled. It was yeah. just like, I am the rabbit god of the buffet. Brr. So that's disconcerting. Mother joins the table while Telly Savalas is serving dinner, but she wants to know where the other person is. Now, as far as we know, there is no other person. But then, something falls and breaks upstairs. Now, when Mother hears the sound, she says, He's back. I knew he'd be back. And then a wine bottle smashes on the dining room floor, and, I don't know, other weird shit happens, I guess. Does it or not? It does. And then Max, the handsome dude, as you keep calling him. Well, fuck his name. He gets... He goes and gets a piece of cake and is all like apologetic and shit. He's like, I'm I'm so sorry. Please have some cake. I'm so sorry. I shall return shortly. And then he goes upstairs and takes the cake. He goes into a secret room. Yeah, he goes into this fucking room that's behind a mirrored wall. And he starts talking to some woman in a bed that's like moaning and crying. And he says, I brought you your favorite I brought you cake. It's your favorite. And then he goes from there into another room and starts yelling at somebody who's not there. And is like, why did you come back? I told you not to come back. And just like raging. So you get to see this weird side of Max that you haven't seen before where he's just like angry and unhinged. And it's really kind of weird. And apparently angry and unhinged to things that aren't fucking there. Yeah, because you never see anybody in the room. Now, by this time, George, the chauffeur, has fixed the car, and he tells Telly Zavallis to inform his people that they can leave whenever they're ready. Now, this news causes the handsome dude to rail at somebody, something, because he's yelling, You'll never take her away again! I'm George Mahakis. Um, But Lisa apparently has been ordered... Who ordered this? Was it the handsome dude? Was it Telly? But somebody said, you should stay the night here at at the creepy mansion with the creepy people. And in a really creepy scene, we become aware that Mother is blind because she keeps touching Lisa's face for way too fucking long. And when Telly tells Mother that Lisa looks exactly like someone we don't know yet, but Mm. upstairs in a hidden room, how many fucking rooms are in this mansion? Lots. Handsome dude has discovered an old drawing of someone who looks just like Lisa, which he sets on fire. Like you do. Mother's told everyone it's too late for them to leave, but that doesn't set well with the pretty lady, cause Lisa, and then Lisa begins playing with this music box, and the music box has spinning figurines on top of it, and it looks like a wedding party except there's a representation of death, which is a skeleton in a red cloak. And then for no reason, Telly Savalos brings in like an old school cassette player and he puts it inside the music box. So is that where the music was coming from or is that just a cool place to hide your cassette player? No, that's where the music was coming from because he says something. What the fuck did he say to her? Something about 
often things have the same simplest explanation or something, which I don't think that's fucking simple. A music box traditionally has like a little fucking thing that makes the music, <laughs> not a fucking 19... 19- 70s tape recorder i don't know it's also a great place to hide your weed <laughs> it's a stash box now elky summer as lisa barely says anything she just holds her hand in front of her mouth like she's biting it lisa always looks like she's waiting for an enema to kick in <laughs> and then lisa has a flashback a hallucination <sighs> vision it's something. And she's in a green dress running around the grounds of the villa when she meets the dead guy who might be a dummy who also might be alive. Turns out his name is Carlos. And he tells Lisa that he had to come back and help her in some way. And they kiss. And honestly, it's kind of gross. Mm-hmm. Just, just mouths open when they shouldn't be and no passion. Just kind of like watching a toddler eat Melba toast. Anyway, then Carlos and Lisa are banging in a room inside the villa that is filled with heads. Mannequin heads. Dummy heads. Just mannequins with strange face paint, and it's a romantic setting, but maybe not for everyone. Serial killers, like I said. (laughs) Mad wig makers. Anyway, then Carlos is gone, and it's the handsome dude there in his stead, and he tells Lisa not to leave. But then again, in the blink of an eye, there's Carlos again, trying to boink Lisa, and I don't know what's happening right now. I want to give you a straightforward explanation, because I watched this thing sober. I don't know (laughs) what the fuck's happening. And meanwhile, the old dude and the pretty lady are out waiting by the car because they want to get the fuck out of there, even though Mother told them it was too late. Rich people don't need no instructions to know how to leave an impressive Italian villa. But they can't find the chauffeur. They can't leave without the chauffeur. And the sun sinks down very heavy behind, but that's not the point right now. Old dude opens a car door... And the chauffeur's body falls out. His throat is slit. And the pretty lady screams and screams. And the old dude, who apparently has known the whole time that his wife was boinking the driver, says, You slut! And then, for reasons no one understands, the chauffeur's body is brought inside the house. In a garden cart. They put his body on a garden cart, like a wagon, (laughs) And they just pull him around the house. And everybody just follows Telly Savalas and the dead chauffeur around the house. And the pretty lady just cries and cries and she screams and cries. And then this weird Bergman-esque procession goes outside and the handsome dude says, they don't want any cops involved in the chauffeur's murder. And then for some reason we see this quick shot of Carlos The person, not the dummy, but he might be a dummy. We don't know. But he's in the house, followed by a shot of bloody scissors. So, did Carlos kill the chauffeur? Did Carlos's mannequin kill the chauffeur? Would this have made more sense if we had watched this drunk, or would it have made less sense? (laughs) I don't know the answer to that one. Inside the house... Telly tells the old dude to leave the corpse to us, which I'm pretty sure was an old American Express commercial tag lot. <laughs> Mother says to send Lisa away, but no one knows where Lisa is. Obviously, Lisa's outside and making out with the handsome dude, and who finds them but Mother? Now, how does Mother know what Lisa and the handsome dude are doing and where they are, even though she's blind, and in this scene, unassisted. Does she just like... She can smell the pheromones. (laughs) Isn't that how cicadas work? Yes. (laughs) So, while handsome dude's talking to his mother, Lisa is grabbed by Carlos in one of his many iterations, and Carlos tells Lisa that they must leave. Now, back in the house... Telly Savalas is in the chapel room of the villa setting up a funeral viewing. Now, we think it's the chauffeur in the coffin because pff, 
That would make fucking sense. Here's the dead guy. Let's stick him in a coffin, and we don't want cops. We'll take care of that here. But no, it's fucking Carlos. But not the dummy Carlos. It's the real Carlos. Now, Carlos is too long to fit in the tiny fucking child-sized coffin that they have in the fucking garage, I guess. Just, you know, we have a lot of coffins. Let's pull this one out for Carlos. So, Telly Savalas breaks Carlos's ankles and just makes Carlos fit into the box. But wait, Carlos somehow is also outside with Lisa, whom he calls Elena. So here's Carlos, who's a dude, also a dead dude, also a mannequin, and Lisa, who is also Elena. So what we've got here, much to my chagrin, is another God's damned reincarnation movie. Lisa is Elena, and Carlos is a dead guy who is alive and also a mannequin. Fuck! Meanwhile, Lisa still hasn't said, like, maybe five words. No, she <laughs> has it. Fucking time. <laughs> it's like she's got an earwig in her throat. <laughs> what is that? Uh, the throat wig. She's throat wig. Lisa's got a fucking throat wig. There you go. Ugh. So Lisa's wandering through the villa, and she finds the room that's filled with heads. Why don't we have a room filled with heads? Because we don't have enough room in the fucking shrine to put heads everywhere. We need another room. If I could build an extension to the shrine, I would fill it up with heads and mannequins, and it would just look like fucking Phantom of the Paradise, and I'd be fine with that. Anyway, who's in the head room? Carlos. (laughs) Carlos. And not only is he dead, not dead, and a giant mannequin, he can also apparently fucking teleport. (laughs) Carlos says he wants to help Lisa, who is Elena. Now, meanwhile, the old dude and the pretty lady go back to their fancy car, and the old dude is giving the pretty lady hell because the driver, whom she had apparently been fucking for a long time, was dead. She wants to stay until the driver's buried. Old dude disagrees. So the pretty lady gets behind the wheel of the car and runs the old dude over like six times. Just forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, magnetic, charge, electric, charge. Knowing full and goddamn well that not 20 minutes earlier in the film, she couldn't open the fucking door to the car. (laughs) Suddenly, she knows how to operate a clutch. How does she know how to try? (laughs) I don't know. So in the magical room of heads, Carlos is trying to fuck Lisa slash Elena, but he gets bludgeoned in the head with a gigantic golden candlestick. It's like Clue. (laughs) It was somebody in the head room with a candlestick. Well, fuck, I win. (laughs) After Carlos gets bashed in the noggin, Lisa passes out. Now, the pretty lady has come back into the house after smashing her husband's skull under her wheels. She sees Carlos getting killed. She runs away screaming. So the killer chases the pretty lady. She runs to this room where, once again, the windows are locked, the door is heavy, there's nowhere to run. So she gets bashed in the head with the same candlestick, thereby making this the easiest game of Clue I've ever fucking played. <laughs> Now, the killer is wearing a red cloak, just like the figurine on the music box. Now, while Lisa's passed out, she's asleep, dreaming her little dreamy dreams. Tilly is in there with the Carlos dummy, and Tilly's talking to himself. And it is the silliest goddamn form of exposition I've seen in quite a while. But here's what we think. Maybe We think maybe this is what happened. I can't verify this. Because none of this movie makes a lick of sense. But, mother was married to Carlos. Okay? Carlos was banging this Elena chick who has somehow been reincarnated as Lisa. Telly also makes plans to turn Lisa into a mannequin because 
he's like measuring her while she's passed out and shit. Now, after she wakes up, he surreptitiously is like running strings up and down her arms, trying to measure out how long a coffin should be. But meanwhile, Mother is downstairs waiting for the funeral service to begin, and it's obvious that they've done this before. How many times? Have they had a fake fucking funeral service in this house just to make Mother feel better about the fact that her husband banged some other chick? Um, that question is not answered in this movie. I am. Uh, we are left believing that it has happened numerous times. Maximilian goes off on a rant at some point shortly after this fucking destroys the chapel and says i can't do this anymore this i i what does he say i hate the smell of death i don't want to do he, any does more say funerals. he does mother this cloth smells of death i hate the smell of death he says and he is in delusionville at this point and he's like this is not a funeral. This is a wedding because he thinks that he and Lisa are going to get married. Everybody's in delusion here. Every single person. Because Telly, while well, he's up in the, the the room full of heads, he tells her that the person in the coffin was actually the Carlos dummy. But the Carlos dummy is in a fucking chair in the same room. He's trying to glue its goddamn face back together. So it can be used in the mock funeral ceremony. Carlos himself is actually dead. So are the mummies embodiments of the ghosts? Are the the fucking, not mummies, uh, mannequins, the dummies, are they, uh, like, no idea? I, I, I don't know. No one knows. I don't think the director, Mario Bava, knew what the fuck was going on right there. <laughs> So anyway, Lisa runs off, and she finds the body of the pretty lady with Mother hovering over it. Now, was she, like, licking the pretty lady's blood? No, she was feeling her face. She was doing the blind thing and trying to figure out if (laughs) the person was dead and who it was. I like my version better. (laughs) Anyway, Lisa runs off, and she's probably looking for a toilet because of that whole enema thing I made up earlier. But... (laughs) Mother tells Telly to find Lisa, who is probably Elena, but the handsome dude kind of waylays Lisa and tells her that they must leave the villa because Mother is the jealous type. But first, there's a quick detour to the hidden room where Maximilian, the handsome dude, delivered a piece of cake towards the beginning of Act 2. He takes Lisa in there. Now, who's in the bed? It's Elena. But it's what's left of her. Yeah, it's it's her skeleton. She she's been dead for a little minute. Elena means nothing to me. The the handsome dude says, even though he wants to be with Lisa because he totally thinks that she's Elena. So handsome dude tells Lisa that they'll always be together. And you know those big fucking makeup powder puff things that were really popular back in the sixties. You know back when fucking Gina Tay was in full mass production. He takes one of those big makeup powder puff things out and puts it over her face like it's full of chloroform. Oh, he pours some on it first. Oh, does he? Because literally, I I, I missed that. Because literally, I thought he had like a fucking container full of chloroform just in that room, ready and waiting. (laughs) (laughs) No, he pours some on it and then puts it to her face. Okay, fine. I thought he was just like the worst Tinder date ever. (laughs) Well, he is, but... (laughs) Yeah, he is, because he knocks Lisa out, and here comes the rape scene. Well, he doesn't quite get there, but... (laughs) It's it's close enough. Yeah. Handsome dude is trying to fuck Lisa in the bed next to Elena's skeleton, and he goes... He goes back and forth between laughing and crying and anger and ecstasy, and it's like all six seasons of Dawson's Creek rolled up into one guy. Also, handsome guy... Is a two pump chump. Well, he is gets it interrupted. By what? By Elena. Oh, because she starts mocking him from beyond the grave. <laughs> she starts cackling, and he <laughs> yells at her, "Stop it! I can't do this." What is, what's he say? I can't do this with you laughing or something. I don't know. Holy shit! It's like Mandy. <laughs> Or I spit on your grave, or I, yeah, you right. know, I don't know. Really, some dudes just can't manage it. That's true, and like I, 
I don't know who said it, but laughter is the best form of birth control. It always <laughs> has been. So after he tries to have a squelching session up there with Lisa, handsome dude goes downstairs, and that's when he destroys all the funeral shit and declares it's going to be a wedding celebration. Now, oh, okay. I got ahead of us. Sorry. That's fine. That's cool. But Mother shows up in that room, and she tells handsome dude that he can't leave because of all the terrible things he has done, and she doesn't want him out there, I don't know, among the English or placed in Haddonfield or Smith's Grove, whatever the fuck that hospital was. My question is, Mother, Carlos, were married. Maximilian was the son. Carlos cheats on Mother with Elena. How fucking old was Maximilian at the time? And why is he under this laboring under this delusion that Elena was in love with him and that he was supposed to be with her? Like, you know, there's just a lot of Mondo Freudo shit going on here that I can't, I can't, I can't explain. Did Elena fuck both the father and the son? Maybe. Because if that's the case, then mother was just double cuckolded that's just not cool at all she was a slut bong you slut anyway we know that well we know that handsome dude killed the pretty lady and some iteration of carlos whether it was real carlos ghost carlos or dummy carlos because handsome dude was wearing the red cloak like on the music box okay so he is the embodiment of death maybe he killed the chauffeur I don't know. That could have been the old dude. It could have been Telly. I have no idea. But Handsome Dude's mother tells him to go after Lisa and kill her. And Handsome Dude stabs Mother in the chest instead. Yep. So while he's wandering about looking for Lisa so he can drug her and marry her or some weird Beetlejuice shit, Handsome Dude goes into the dining room. And that's where all the fucking dead people are sitting around the table like they're waiting for somebody to fill up their finger bowls. And that's disturbing. But then, Mother comes floating into the room. And that's when Handsome Dude's mommy issues all come to fore. Suddenly, all the dead people at the table are staring right at him. And he can't take it. He can't take the whole dead mother ghosty thing coming at him. And in this weird paroxysm of Oedipal complexes, he falls backwards out of a window to his death. But it wasn't Mommy's ghost. It was Mother's body being pushed upright by Telly Savalas. Now, how this works, I don't know. You just pick Alita Vili up and, like, bolt her feet to a fucking longboard and then just kind of hunch down so you can't see your behind you. Just... It was, it, was, it was, and he makes some kind of wise crack, and I don't even know what it was. I don't know what he said. Something like, oh, you can't get, get good help these days, or some bullshit like that. So the next morning, next morning, but the entire house has been overrun by nature. Her bedroom is filled with trees and plants, and when she wakes up, her nipples are covered by dead leaves. And here's a very serious question. Why the fuck can't we see Elkie Summer's nipples? It doesn't matter if she's getting drug nailed by the handsome dude or what. Th- this we don't was, get to see him. Don't get to see it. You don't get to see nothing. You don't get to see. Like, at one point, the camera pans around, so you should be able to see at least her bush. But you can't because it's a fucking, I don't know, goddamn moral mushroom in the way or something. <laughs> moral. It's just. <laughs> It's a moral mushroom. It is, but it's like everything just works. Nature just works to block her nudity from the viewing audience, and it's stupid. So when she gets dressed, again, in a very measured fashion, so you can't even see a sliver of cooter, um, (laughs) she exits the villa, and it's all overgrown. All the grounds are overgrown. There's vines everywhere. But what she does find is handsome dude's dummy head somewhere out there, I guess, in the fucking family graveyard. And it's like, don't leave. Don't go away, Elena. Lisa, I love you, even though I don't have a penis right now because I'm dead. So she finds her way off the grounds, 
and there are children outside playing ball, and they accidentally bounce that ball in Lisa's direction, Lisa catches it. But when the kids see her, they're like, they say that she must be a ghost because no one has lived in that villa for over a hundred (laughs) years. And they run away screaming. What kind of (laughs) fucking urban legend goddamn bullshit is that? (laughs) It's right up there with, well, no, I picked up a hitchhiker. When I looked at my back seat, she was gone. And then when I asked her mother about it, they said she'd been dead for 20 years. So Lisa somehow finds the city, although it's safe to assume that her tour bus has long since gone and nobody on board gave a fuck that she was missing. So she makes her way to the airport and she boards a big old jet airliner. But guess what? She doesn't see any passengers on board. Nobody's on it. Now, I don't know how she was so unattentive when she boarded the plane that she didn't notice nobody else was on the plane. So she goes exploring. And this plane is fuck all gigantic. It's one of those old, like, stratoliners that's got, like, a spiral staircase going upstairs to the first class or whatever. That freaks me out. I don't ever want to be on a plane that big. I don't want to be on a double decker pl- I don't want to be on a double decker bus. I have a hard enough time eating a double-decker sandwich. I don't want to do that at all. So she goes exploring, and she walks through what seems like 40, 80 sections of plane. And then she gets to the back of the plane, which looks shockingly like a business class. I don't know. That's what I think. But all of the dead people are sitting in airplane seats with their trays in the upright position. So Lisa stumbles up to the cockpit and bangs on the door. And when the door opens, it's Telly Savalas flying the plane. Motherfucking Telly Savalas. Lisa crumples to the floor with a pale face and wearing the green dress she had on while she was having her Carlos hallucinations slash dreams slash lucid dreams slash fantasy slash flashback. So Lisa's apparently dead now and the plane takes off. And that's how it fucking ends. Which leaves a lot of fucking questions to be answered. (laughs) Mainly, how many flight hours does the devil have to log to get a pilot's license? Well, and was Telly Savalas the devil? That's another fantastic question. Was he the devil? I don't like, know. He vaguely resembled the fucking fresco in the middle of the town. And if he is the devil, the fuck is he doing? He's just like fixating on this one family and making them relive this horrible time of betrayal in the past over fucking over again by recreating their recreating them with these fucking mannequins and it's like do you not have other things to do motherfucker right <laughs> like you're the fucking devil <laughs> so i think he comes across more of like a Kind of like a trickster god, like a lower form, like a demigod kind of thing. Is he an imp? Maybe. Just just out to fuck with people. Like, he's just fixated on this group, this one family, and that's it. And he's got nothing better to do. He doesn't want to go back to hell, so he's just going to fuck around with these people as long as he can get away with it. Because i got to tell you, Lisa and the Imp is not a great movie title. It's that's, not. That's right up there with, like, the last Mimsy is a really shitball movie title. I just don't buy the whole devil thing. So this is a devil movie with no devil? I mean, because this could be, like, what, Lisa and the bald guy? Well, I mean, there are many people out there in horror circles that consider Lisa and the devil to be a classic of some sort. And, I mean, it's one of Bava's most ethereal works, I guess. But even coming at this movie sober and trying really hard to pay attention and make sure that we caught all the details and nuances of the film, it's still a difficult watch. Like, I don't expect Italian horror movies to make a lot of sense, but this one was just a mountain of goof. I wonder if other people liked Lisa and the Devil. I wonder if we should call someone to see if they liked Lisa and the Devil. I also wonder who will pick up the phone if we call and ask them about Lisa and the Devil. Fuck it. Let's just reach out and touch someone. I mean, not literally, because that's creepy. 
it is time to reach out into the ether and see who will answer the siren call of the landline of the damned. It's time to dial 666, the number of the geeks. Well, it looks like Ray and Persephone have once again picked up the phone on the party line of the eternally damned. Let's talk about Lisa and the devil. Um, Do we have to? I think we, since that's what the show's about this episode, I think maybe we should. Yes. Oh, okay. Let me toss out one real quick question just to kind of get things moving here. Do you think that Telly Savalas was actually the devil? Oh, well... See, you have to understand, I just gained a huge piece of information that I should have already had about 20 minutes ago. So this is all so new. I'm experiencing new feelings. (laughs) I don't know where I am. (laughs) I can elaborate if you want. I don't know if we want to talk. Does this 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 need to go offline? I mean. No, 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 no. Okay. So I was tired last night. And uh, I wasn't quite sure if the movie was so confusing because I was tired or if it was just that confusing. And we were talking about it while walking Stormy before getting on here. And uh, I decided I might as well just look up the synopsis, make sure I'm not missing anything. That painting, that fresco in the beginning, I had no idea. I didn't see it. I saw that they were looking at the fresco, and that's all I saw. I missed the whole spiel about, like, I don't know. I don't want to give spoilers away. I guess that's kind of what we do, right? We already spoiled it from <laughs> hell to breakfast. But, like, yeah. how, how it had, they, they very much mentioned, right, the devil and carrying the big mannequin-like things, you know, carrying lost souls to hell. Missed that part, had no idea that, that that was actually a thing. That that would have helped make so much more sense of the movie. So I went in not even knowing that amount of it. And I was just like, who is this guy carrying around dolls? And why are they coming to life randomly? I don't understand. It's still a legit question. I did not miss that part. And I was still just as fucking confused and was like, what the hell is happening now? Because this is really God and Kojak are raging inside me. (laughs) I, I feel like he played that character the way I picture God a lot of times. Just like this playful jester like character that that fucks around with people because he can. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like at the end, right, when she's running around and he's just kind of like, <laughs> yeah, thought you were getting away with it, huh? It was just like, wow, that feels more like God to me than the devil. I feel like, whatever. The temptation is to say that says more about you than it does the movie, but I don't think it does. <laughs> because I think the movie is just a fucking arcade of confusion Mm -hmm. so i don't think you're wrong about maybe this is how you also see god because he's kind of like a low rent lawrence olivier in clash of the titans (laughs) he's just like this very low rent (laughs) just like this shit zeus who fucking moves people around on this chessboard just to like see what happens let's see how they react to this that's that's that, that's kind of how I see it. So I don't think you're completely wrong about that, but I also think it would have been a lot harder to sell if it was just called Lisa and God. <laughs> oh, no doubt. And I'm not saying that they were trying to give any sort of message that no, actually, God, the devil. Uh, just that for some reason, just the playfulness of how he ruins people just felt very godlike to me. <laughs> so do you think God has like a lollipop addiction? Oh, God. I was wondering, it took me about halfway through the movie before I realized he actually was eating lollipops and it wasn't just like a toothpick thing. Well, devil and God are two sides of the same fucking coin, so might as well be embodied in one character. Well, who yeah, has but a- if... If anybody Oral knows fixation. how many licks it takes to get to the bottom of a Tootsie Roll Pop, it's probably Telly Savalas. 
Uh... Persephone, what do you think? Is Telly Savalas the devil in this movie? Because X and I have a disagreement on this. Well, I will say that he was the only person in this movie that acted, <laughs> had any acting chops whatsoever. Now, now. Uh, <laughs> no, they're not wrong. That's just so accurate. Bad. So, so bad. Just chewing on all the scenery. And, and I guess it doesn't help the script was so awful. All the dialogue was just horrible, and none of it was really memorable at all. I don't know. I thought Miss Tanner was was pretty great, but I think she's great in everything. She's always like the same character, just different clothing and different hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she offered an air of mystery among nothingness. But do you think she was blind? Because I don't think she was blind. I think she was fucking faking it through the whole movie. Like, was the character blind? Yeah. Oh, I didn't buy it. Yeah. Dang. I think she, I think she was fucking faking it. Like some kind of weird parental manipulation where she's just like, oh, I'm blind. Please tell me everything. Just well, like that. Yeah. Like some kind of weird ass fucking parental gaslighting. She did name him Maximilian. <laughs> so what do y'all think? Would you like give this a recommendation to anybody to watch for any reason? If so, why? Oh, my goodness. Absolutely not. <laughs> you have an hour and a half of your life that you just want to throw in the garbage and set on fire. Sit down with this movie. I was practically done, like, minutes in, like, walking up, the, the tourist walking up to the fresco, them laying out that it's the devil, and then a minute later, uh, Lisa's just walking down the street to some shop drawn by that uh, little music box that she somehow heard with her super hearing, walked far enough away to lose track of the, the square they were in. Is that what it was? Because I figured she just had to pee. Well, no, were, she. It yeah. was music. Yeah. Yeah. She she looked like she couldn't hold. You know the when a baby wobbles its head a lot, like that's what it reminded me of. Like I was confused. I didn't understand what was wrong with her until she started moving enough for me to realize. No, she's walking away toward something. <laughs> a toilet. <laughs> no. And now that I understand why they were stopping where they were at, I didn't catch the fresco stuff or else I would have realized how ridiculous it was that they went, here is this painting of a man that looks like this, carrying mannequins. And then she's like, oh, I got to go follow something that's invisible and I can't, I can apparently hear and she goes into a shop, and there is the devil standing there buying mannequins. <laughs> like, and it had to be super on the nose because they had to do the fade in, fade out from the fresco to his face to really let you know who this was. Well, I got to side with Persephone on this one. I would I, give this one a pass. <laughs> can't recommend this for any reason i i have no reason that i say you know watch this like i am glutton for punishment i will get into a movie that is just absolute shit and i will wait for that payoff right i will watch to the very bitter fucking end waiting for that payoff waiting for the movie to make it worth my while at least if you can give me five minutes that i can say yes that was worth watching this movie, then I'm happy. Couldn't find it in this flick. Well, can we talk about the payoff? Can we get to the ending and talk about what happened in that gigantic plane that was apparently 9,000 feet long? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lord knows how many stories. It, it had a spiral, spiral staircase. staircase. Yeah. So it was like, I don't know, some old like Pan Am Stratoliner or some shit. I don't yeah, know it what looked, it was, but it was enormous. I, there's no way that thing got off the fucking ground. That's ridiculous. You know what it reminded me of? Have you seen The Wedding Singer? I haven't. I have not. Oh, have. It, it's in Adam, Sam, in Adam Sandler comedy, right? And there's a scene where they're, he's in first class. It takes place in the 80s, right? They, they are in a plane with a spiral staircase. I was like, 
we were watching it last night. I was like, this has to be the same place. <laughs> I'm just so confused. Here's what I love about this is that you have just compared a movie by Mario Bava, who is revered around the world as one of the finest film directors of all time, to an Adam Sandler flick. Thank you I, so much for that. I also uh, compared it last night to Airplane at one point, I think. <laughs> and uh, That's fair. To um, Blue. An, an episode of Rick and Morty. And <laughs> Clue. And Clue and Rocky Horror, actually. <laughs> Wow, you were rich and reaching real deep for that one. Oh, I was. Uh, it was the they went from like tending to dead bodies to being in a room getting ready to eat dinner or something, and so it made me think of Rocky Horror. <laughs> it's, except, it's rather a tender subject. Right. Except instead of you know it being Rocky or Meatloaf, it was just this gigantic stuffed rabbit looming over the cheese tray. Oh, that was another thing. I said that it felt very um, Mad Hatter party, like the tea party that the Mad Hatter threw. Whenever they showed that, I was like, wait, this is this took a weird turn for a couple seconds, and then I was like, okay, it's even weirder than I thought. How many times do you think that the family had brought people in or discovered people, and uh, engaged in that mock funeral procession because there are a lot of heads in that room, which I'm not saying I wouldn't want a room full of mannequin heads, but I mean, they had to have had done that a lot of fucking times. Do you think? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for this family, there's no reason for them to have that many heads. Here's my thing. I, I actually... Because when I'm tired, I'll, like, focus on really weird details, and that was one of them. Like, why are there so many damn heads everywhere? And I went, is it because those are people who have already been there and they're serving no purpose currently? Or was it people who he's planning? Like, how long he's planning on doing this? Is this, like, just a hobby? He's holding them until he has a reason to use them? I want to know why the devil is obsessed over this one fucking family. I mean, does he have that much fucking free time? <laughs> and he just spends his eternity fucking with this that, one family? Well, that's um, one thing that I actually thought of. I was like, is this guy really the devil? Or is it just some guy who's got really great charisma like a cult leader and he makes people fall into his madness? I think if he was a cult leader, he wouldn't be masquerading as the butler for this family. I mean, that's some dumbass, you know, servant leadership. But as far as is he just fucking with his family, obviously he's got a pilot's license. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, he can go wherever he wants whenever he feels like going. Like, I'll be back in yeah. four hours. I have to go to Maine. <laughs> well, I was thinking not so much that he is a cult leader, but he has the same kind of charisma as one would as a cult leader who can just like you, they have that way to be able to convince you of anything, but he's the fucking devil. Like he can convince anybody of anything anyway, and he can be anywhere he wants to go. He probably, I don't know, maybe it's like, uh, it would be cool if it was like in heroes where he can, he can kill them and inhabit like all their knowledge and everything. Then he would, uh, already by default be a pilot. Yeah, but I mean, he wouldn't have to kill them to get their knowledge because he's the devil. He the should devil. know. I know. I mean, this should already be. It would just be better if it was a crazed, like, serial killer type, and he took the dead bodies and like made them into some weird mannequin human hybrid. Because at one point, inside of the mystical room of heads. When Lisa's walking around, he is surreptitiously kind of measuring her for a coffin. He's like taking the string and trying to see how long her arms are and trying to get her inseam and everything. So he's fitting her out. How many times has he done that is, is, is my question. That's the only thing that I'm curious about in that scene. Also, is Carlos dead or alive or does he exist? Oh, who knows? Yeah, we were talking about that on our walk, like, who the hell's Carlos? Who, how are all these people related? And it just got all, it just became a confusing mess when we were trying to, like, explain it to ourselves. Like, the relationship with Carlos and Maximilian and Elena, and then 
Lisa surreptitiously being Elena or some nonsense, and this is like... <laughs> yeah, we're pretty sure it's a reincarnation movie. Because at one point, Telly Savalos, who may or may not be the devil, just says, oh, Carlos is dead. And if that's the case, then what the fuck happened in the previous 60 minutes that we just watched? When she pushes him down the steps in Act 1 and his pocket watch falls out, is he dead or is he just like stunned like an old episode of Star Trek? <laughs> Nobody knows. See, this movie has stunned everyone into fucking silence because yeah. we don't know what the shit happened. He falls down like three steps and dies and the pocket watch falls out and the hands fall off and make a little cross. So make sure you notice that. You saw the cross too. I yeah. totally missed the cross. <laughs> I missed everything. <laughs> well, I want to know if y'all were as annoyed as I was at Lisa's apparent inability to speak. Her spatial abilities of, like, running off and getting lost instantaneously. Yeah. <laughs> she literally went around one tree and didn't know where the hell she was. Yes. She did. Yeah. And, like, in the very beginning, like, when she heard the music box and walked into the shop that couldn't have been more than, like, 20 feet away from this square, she gets out and goes immediately in the wrong direction. <laughs> I think she had. I think she spoke more words in Act One than she did the entire rest of the film. Like she told her friend, "Wait for me, I'll be right back." And then she because I asked, have to pee on a music box. And then she asked Telly Savalas how to get to the square, and then this old woman who completely ignored her how to get to the square. And then I don't think she talked for the rest of the fucking movie. No, I mean she said a few things, but okay. So she made out with Carlos and Maximilian the handsome dude. But it comes right down to she doesn't know who she's trying to fuck, but she's okay with it either way. Doesn't matter. It could be the old Omar Sharif looking dude, or it could be fucking the Hawaiian surfer looking motherfucker. Just like, whatever. I'm down. Let's roll. And I'm not trying to slut shame or anything like that. I'm just like, wouldn't you want to know the name of the person you're having sex with? Well, not just that. Like, what is up with that style of, like, kissing and making out and making love in like older movies where it's like I'm going to push my face on your face now we're going to wrestle like it's horrible it's just like they they're both kind of have open mouths and they're like it's like when it's weird it's weird it was making me uncomfortable it's like watching it's, two goldfish little... puke on each other yes exactly like when Maximilian like totally chloroformed her. <laughs> the, the powder the puff. puff. That is so awful. Well, and did he just like, just the, it was so confusing to figure out even what he was doing or how, like, was he just in, I don't know. I don't know. See, my weird. theory was that he had like a little marble container full of chloroform that he soaked the powder puff in and then shoved it over her face. Cootie disagreed with me on that theory. I saw the bottle. He actually had a bottle and poured it onto the powder puff before he put it to her face. Well, because he's using that powder puff like it was fucking Waylon Flowers and Madam. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just awful. Why was that even necessary in that? I don't know. Like, why? Because the that? skeleton was in the bed. I don't want to fuck with a skeleton in the bed. Especially if I think they're watching me. Well, no, that, I mean, Lisa was totally on board, dude. She was ready to jump his bones and live yeah. there with him or run away with him or whatever the fuck he wanted, which is really weird, too. Like, how many people in such a short span are going to profess their undying love for you? And it's, it's like, bitch, you just got just off like, the bus. <laughs> OK, sure. I'll run away with you. I don't know anything about you, but let's. Oh, wow. Ed, yes, let me grip my chloroform. Yeah, like, why was that necessary? Of course, I don't think Maximilian was quite in his right mind. No, he had he, some he, major Norman Bates syndrome going on. And he was making all these weird Bruce Lee faces. <laughs> so it was like a mixture yeah. between rape and Jeet Kune Do. When I first saw him, that's exactly what I said. I was like, this is like great value Bruce Lee. <laughs> that's awesome. When handsome dude is forcing himself upon her we only see like 
her naughty bits for like two seconds. And then the rest of it, they are so cleverly concealed, they had to have directed that with a yardstick. Like, <laughs> even when she wakes up and the whole house has, like, been reclaimed by nature, there are dead leaves over her nipples. <laughs> yeah, I thought that that was so ridiculous that it was actually funny. Like, I felt like the last 15 minutes were more comedy than they were anything else. And I couldn't figure out if it was just like, you know when you feel really uncomfortable for a while and then you feel a little safe, so all of a sudden you just start hysterically laughing because that's the only reaction you can have? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but that's what this movie felt like. Just really uncomfortable and confused for a while and then you are you just find yourself laughing out of nowhere. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the fuck happened. Yeah, that was our commentary the whole time we watched it, just turning to each other. It's like, what, what's going on? <laughs> it was pretty. It, it, like, there were parts of it that were really pretty, I thought. And I was like, okay, well, at least I can say that it wasn't an ugly movie. But that was really the only, gr like, good thing that I could say because I was just too confused the entire time. Because what little context they gave, I missed. So... <laughs> I've read writing about this movie that says that it works on its own kind of nightmare dream sort of logic, you know? What do y'all think about that particular opinion of this film? That sounds like a great way to describe something that you don't understand and you don't want people to, like, you want to feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Ray on that one. Yeah. Fever dreams make more sense than this movie. And have better writing. <laughs> How'd they all get on the plane? Was there actually a plane? And if Lisa is in hell, precisely when did she die? I yeah, That's kind of whenever I realized that she got on the plane and you didn't see anybody on there, even before they made, they wanted you to realize that, I was like, no, it's, it's weird in here. And then it was, I feel like it immediately you know that that's, just going to be how it plays out and then I was just happy I was relieved that they made him the pilot because that made it acceptable to me after all of that but it made me kind of go well how long has she been dead like maybe she's just in some weird I, I don't even know like her version of hell maybe that's what hell looks like for her <laughs> you know <laughs> I don't know hell looks like a 747 with nobody on it and nowhere to go <laughs> Except the dead people who are apparently in business class. Yeah. I mean, you're dead. Put those fuckers in first, you know? <laughs> They're not going to bother the flight attendants. I think that Lisa died, like, before she... I think that her waking up in the house that had been reclaimed by nature was... Um, I think she died right before that. And I think that that was just Satan fucking with her. <laughs> until he could welcome her into the afterlife, like one last good scare. I gotta ponder that. Well, I mean, because she walked to the edge of the property and those kids saw her and they were like, oh, she's a ghost, and, you know, run away, run away. Oh, yeah. Lived there for a hundred years. She never actually left the property, I don't think. I think that whole going to the airport was just Satan fucking with her. Well, then there better be a big ass landing strip somewhere back behind the villa because. He's the devil. <laughs> Taking a 767 to hell. All right, so so what I'm hearing here is that the devil is om, omniscient and omnipresent and has all kinds of weird aviation powers <laughs> and flew all of them back to the villa for the sequel that we never got, thank the gods. It's like they were actually on a plane is what I'm saying. So just like the plane was an illusion? Yeah. But everything, yeah, be but everything that. before that was not? Satanic holodeck. Uh, I kind of took it as, yeah, the final clue, if you hadn't picked up yet, that this might have all been, like, just him fucking with her the whole time, that none of it was real. You know, maybe it was just all her perception of what was happening. But, again, I was confused the entire time because I missed a big part of the beginning <laughs> See, I think I would go with that if we weren't shown the other people 
at the mansion. Like, her own version of purgatory or hell or whatever, that's fine. But then we also got to see the pretty lady run the fuck over the old dude 900 times. Just So <laughs> yeah. where did that fit in when it was a scene that she didn't see? I, I forgot about that. Were they also in hell? Was he just like picking everybody up like some kind of satanic uber and just shuffling them yeah. off to this villa? Maybe. Why not? I mean, that's what the fresco was about, right? Satan collecting dead souls. <laughs> also, I that scene where she runs over her husband is just... Huh. That was comedy. That was yeah. Great. Yeah. I don't know. the best part of the movie, it. actually. Yeah, Split yeah, yeah. his head like a melon. Just yep. cr- crunchity. The, the action was uh, chef's kiss. <laughs> so I can't, I can't tell from y'all. Did you like it or not? I mean, I know you wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but just on a personal level, was it yeah. okay? No, no? Thumbs down. No thumbs down. Toes down. Everything down. <laughs> Off. Toes down. I feel like, ultimately, I want to say I didn't enjoy it, but there's something. You know, like, whenever you say, I fucking hated that roller coaster but then you're like all right i'll go i'll go again it's fine (laughs) where like something in you whether it's because i was intrigued or i'm just still left going what the fuck was that i gotta watch it again i gotta figure out what's going on like and if maybe that's the appeal of it but it was it's just (sighs) i think it was mainly visually i liked some of the Scenes and I was like, oh, it'd be cool to do a photo shoot with that kind of style of something. And so I think that part of it for me was enjoyable, but that's also probably why I don't really understand a lot of the movie. I wasn't paying attention. Do you have stuff. that many purple <laughs> cells that you could actually do a photo shoot like that? Because that movie was purple and red and a little bit of green, but it was just. Oh. There was a scene actually. There, there was a set part of the, one of the sets where the walls are, I think, white with painted vines and flowers on it. And I thought that that was really pretty. And I like it whenever horror movies and stuff aren't always in dark, dingy places or something like that. I felt like it was actually brighter as a movie than I would expect. Kind of like uh, how I love Midsummer, right? Because it takes place all basically in the daytime. Like, I like movies like that. Man, if they put a crown of flowers on Telly Savalas' head, I may have changed my opinion about this flick. Yeah. <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. Right? I mean, there were ruins. I think I, I think it's because it's the only, it's the first movie I've ever seen that he was in. Like, I'd never seen him act or do anything before. So, and he was really entertaining for me. I felt like if something sold me, on this movie it was probably him just because he was enjoyable to watch even though the everything else was not enjoyable (laughs) i kind of loved how he was just swigging liquor while he was working on the mannequins and that one scene he was just like throwing back shots of what the fuck ever whiskey or something that was fun he was like railing at i don't know his his plot in the universe or what was he railing about? I don't even remember what he was ranting over. He was mad because he was the servant in that family's house, which if you're Satan, why are you pissed? Yeah. You, Cause yeah. you could obviously get into your airplane and fly the fuck out of there whenever you want. Yeah. I was confused. I was like, how is he the butler? If he's the devil, like how did he become someone who is, essentially having to wait on this other family and is he there because he's like that was my confusion i was like are we supposed to actually believe he's the actual devil and he's just chosen to be in this position is there like a bigger plan to all of this that we're not even aware of or is it a guy who like thinks he's the devil (laughs) i don't know now, if there was a spinoff sitcom called My Butler is the Devil that was based on this movie, I'd be all in on that. Hey, I might watch that. All right, final words on uh, Lisa and the Devil, besides the fact that Lisa was practically a deaf mute throughout the entire film. <laughs> I think I have about as much to say about this as she did. <laughs> Put me on a 767 and fly me to hell. That's all I got to say. Where will you be seated? Business? First class, 
coach. The lavatory are the cars. <laughs> I'll take first class because at least they got booze. It don't matter if you're dead like these motherfuckers were. I don't know. It would matter to me. You just want to be dead and have like a, a airplane bottle of rum in your hand? All of them. I'll get <laughs> ripped to the tits, flying to hell. Interestingly enough, there's another cut of Lisa and the Devil called House of Exorcism. Now, this version includes new footage of a priest and... Apparently his old girlfriend who just likes to walk around, you know, starkers. Lisa's possessed, and footage from the Lisa and the Devil cut is presented as flashbacks. Honestly, we haven't watched The House of Exorcism yet. It might be great. It might be a hot pile of garbage. It seems like something we should watch, just being who we are, so maybe we'll ramp around to it eventually. The original cut of Lisa and the Devil never got an official theatrical release in Italy. Still, we were initially intrigued by the word devil in the title, and we may have been hoodwinked. Just because we watched Lisa and the Devil sober doesn't mean we didn't desperately want to drink all the way through the damn thing. So if you choose to drink your way through Lisa and the Devil, by the gods, we are here to help. It's time for the planet's favorite drinking game, Drinking with the Devil, where your love of bad movies meets your disdain for your own liver. When dummies become people and people become dummies. <laughs> Jesus. Although pretty much everybody's a dummy in this fucking movie. This one's going to be a slobber knocker, kids. Hold on to your boots. <laughs> Drink. Every time you think mother is faking it and isn't actually blind. Oh, shit. That's like a lot of the movie. Uh, dude. <laughs> I don't think she's blind at all. I think she's faking it the whole fucking time. Yep. That's hilarious. All right. Drink. Every time Telly Savala smokes instead of sucking that lollipop of hymns. <laughs> Drink. Every time someone she doesn't actually know tells Lisa they love her and asks her not to leave. <laughs> I told you it was like Tinder. I told you it was like the worst fucking Tinder date ever. Oh, my God. <coughs> Drake, every time you ask yourself, when the hell does the devil show up? <laughs> Lots. And finally, our grandmaster challenge, drink. Every time Lisa gets lost. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh. All right, people. Fuck. <laughs> Please be advised that we here at Kiss the Goat do not condone underage drinking or alcohol abuse. However, they've, they've always, always worked, worked for us. us. Hey, did you get the mail from Stephanie before you locked her up in the cellar? Yeah, it's up there on the altar. Okay, cool. I'll grab it. So... When are you going to let Stephanie out of the cellar? Well, she's got two more Candace Cameron Buer movies to agonize oh. through. And then I reckon I'll let her back upstairs. I expect that her manual dexterity will have improved once she's been humbled. <laughs> humbled? She's probably gone mad. Yeah, well, I guess she ought not have spilled her fucking wine. Man, you're a harsh taskmaster. I kind of like it. In the meantime, it's time for the multiverse's favorite form of verbal interaction, Ask the Goat, where we answer your questions and you question our answers. 
as Cootie rummages through the malevolent mailbag. Rummage, rummage, rummage. Please be informed that you can send your questions in to Ask the Goat by using three different methods of inquiry. Potentially, the easiest way to ask us the question is by joining the Kiss the Coat group on Facebook. Look us up, answer some simple questions, and just bop on into the grooviest bunch of devil movie lovers on the internet. I mean, you got a face, right? You might as well book it in our group. You know, you know, the ultimate goal for the Facebook group is to hit 666 members and then just close it off. Yes. Just shut that fucker down. Just get to that number and not let anyone else in. Just because we think that's funny. <laughs> well, if you decide not to splay your question all over the book of face, you can send us a question via email. Just fire off your questions to the goat of madness at gmail dot com. And let me tell you, X checks that count roughly every seven minutes. That is probably not true. Nonetheless, all of your questions are welcome. You can also follow us on Twitter, and honestly, I hope you do. I mean, we could use a few more cool people over there, and all of our acolytes are welcome to join us at our own little corner of the Twitterverse. That's at the goat of M-A-D-N-E and the number one, which is just, that's just fucking dumb. You always complain about our Twitter name. And I will never stop. It annoys the piss out of me. Look, just search for Kiss the Goat on Twitter. You'll find us. You can ask us anything for Kiss the Goat. We don't believe in TMI, but we do believe in you, our beloved acolytes. Our first question comes from the creator of The Bad, The Weird, and The Cheesy, Matthew Tangent. Matt. Matt wants to know, what film do you think would benefit the most from a Black Phillip cameo? Dr. Doolittle. I mean, Holy shit. I mean, all those animals fucking talk anyway, right? I mean, don't they? I mean, there's like the fucking two-headed llama and shit. What was it? Push me, pull you. And there's a lion. There's probably a monkey in there somewhere. So I want Black Phillip and they're going, What's that like to live deliciously? And they like fucking bite Dr. Doodle's throat out before he can start singing. I want to see Black right. Phillip show up in fucking Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. <laughs> Seriously, I want him to just come trolloping out of the woods and be like, Bitch, you don't need no Prince Charming. Follow me into the woods. Find your own power. Let's roll with it, babe. And let's fly. Let's yes. fucking fly. Oh, I love it. That's a great Prince answer. Let's live deliciously. <laughs> Chris Miles has a question about Ryan Reynolds. You know, Reynolds owns the ad company that created that ad for Match.com where the devil had a date with the year 2020, which makes sense because that year was just a perfect storm of of awful things. But Miles wants to know if Reynolds is a download Satanist or merely a charming imp. Uh, i got to go with the merely charming imp. Was that all you had to say about that? Was just, yes, he's an imp? Yeah, I mean, I mean, fucking Ryan Reynolds, man. He's got this just hilarious, chaotic kind of sense of humor. And I don't really believe that he's out to fuck anything up. I think he just likes to light a match and sit back and watch and see what happens. So you say Reynolds is chaotic good? Yes. Okay. I agree with you on that. I don't think he's a Satanist, but I do think he is a funny funny human being and i love it when he tweets i love his pseudo feud with hugh jackman i even like his gin commercials i don't even fucking like gin but i'll watch his gin commercials because that shit's funny so yeah <laughs> we both agree he's an he's an imp but he's not he's not a full bore uh you know satan sucker licker All right, so next is Mike Merriman. He wants to know, where does the goat prefer to be kissed? At a charming downtown bistro <laughs> over a craft beer and hand-battered onion rings. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god, you're making the goat sound like a fucking hipster. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about goat kissing on the last episode. We talked about, you know, goat rim jobs and goat lingus <laughs> and everything else. I mean, you could probably, I don't know, is there a different, like, gender for goats? I like, think the goat likes to be kissed between the horns. Oh, good just, answer. Just right there on the crown. You know, it's got to be itchy, so scratch it good first and then kiss it. Well, you better funnel its balls while you're kissing it between the horns or else he's going to be upset. Well, yeah, that's a given. You always fondle the balls. <laughs> Come on. Can't ignore them. They're right, mm -hmm. I mean, they're right fucking there, you know? <laughs> Jesus, do punch him, do something with him. Uh, Mike Tutino asks, and this is a great question: Have either of you attended a black mass? If so, what did you think? And if not, would you, if given the chance? Um, I have not attended a black mass, but I tell you, if given the chance, fuck yes, I totally would. Um, if nothing else, just to sit back and have a drink and watch that shit go down and be like, whoo what the hell is this? Like, can I get a balcony seat, y'all? Can I just kind of sit up and watch it from above? I want to see the nudity. I want to see what kind of orgies are happening. I want to see what kind of, you know, blood. What, what What's in the chalice there, dude, in the horn mask? I want all the deets. Yeah, I've not been to a black mask either. I've not been invited. Mm -mm. Um, I guess my thing is, I will go to your black mask. Can I leave my shirt on? Because I'm afraid that my fucking beer belly is going to get in the way of <laughs> other, uh, other, other things going on. Like you think you're going to be the only dude there, only white dude there with a beer belly. Come on. <laughs> God damn it. All right. That's probably fair. Um, <laughs> But no, I've not attended a black mass. I would go, but I'm with Cootie. I'd be up in the balcony ordering, you know, spritzer, wine spritzer drinks and, <laughs> and like, you know, just criticizing it from afar. Just like, hmm, hmm, I don't think they have those quarters placed in exactly the correct cardinal directions. <laughs> I think that altar may be some kind of faux stone they purchased from Home Depot. <laughs> oh, my God. So I'd, I'd be the dick watching the Black Mass. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'd totally do it. Let's see. Uh, next, Rolf Pickler presents us with a multiple choice question. Who would you rather be pursued by on a cross-country road trip? The Psychomania Biker Gang the werewolves on wheels, or the race with the devil cult. <laughs> you know what? The race with the devil people were fucking tenacious. They weren't smart. Okay? They're like the same motherfuckers. They like come from the Buford T. Justice School of chasing people. So it's like, well, I want to run my shit into a ditch while I'm trying to get to my target. So... Unenlightened rednecks is what I would call the race with the devil cult. Now, the psychomania people, they got that toad power. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of spooky. But truth is, I'm not seeing werewolves on wheels. So I can't really, I mean, you know, two out of three ain't bad, as Meatloaf said. But I would have to go with the race with the devil cult just because we know the back roads. And we can probably get away from those assholes to get back to the house before dinner time. That is exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Okay, so they were tenacious, but you know what, bitches? Y'all ain't smart. And I think we are. And I think we could totally, totally outwit those motherfuckers, take the back roads, get home by supper time, be good to go. Also, the rest of the devil people, even in the theatrical release, they blurred out that girl's nipples. Ain't no... <laughs> Ain't no nipple blurring around here, bitches. Tell you that much. Nope. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it, do it. Uh, Derek Bourgeois of the No More Room in Hell podcast asks, what are some of your favorite animated interpretations of the devil? And if you could make your own animated version, what would you want it to look like? God damn, that's a good question. <sighs> Y'all are banging us this week. Finger banging. Really no lube. Just two. Knuckle deep. This is great. 
Derek, I'm going to apologize to you because I totally meant to do some research on this one beforehand. I honestly cannot come up with, like, a, outside of a Bugs Bunny cartoon, I can't think of an animated devil. And that is my favorite version. Not the Bugs Bunny, mind you, but the devil from the Tom and Jerry cartoons. Oh, it was the Tom and Jerry. That's right. That is my favorite animated version of the devil. Tom goes down the fucking escalator to hell and there's the devil just fat boy with the horns and the tail wrapped around his wrapped around his calf legs going ha 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 I love that. I think that's great. That's probably my favorite animated interpretation of, of, of Satan himself. Now what would I want Satan to look like? Uh who was Donald Trump's last press secretary? Kaylee McEnany. That's who it was. Yes. The devil is a skinny blonde girl who constantly quotes scripture and talks about how she survived whatever, ass cancer or whatever the fuck they had, and then lies and lies and lies while promising that she would never tell a lie. Holy Jesus Christ. She's like the fucking Henry Rollins. She's like the Rollins band version of a of a public servant. So yeah, I would want Satan to look like Barbie. You're freaking me out right now. I'm not wrong. All right, well, our final question for this edition of Ask the Goat comes from the co-host of VD Clinic Podcast, Vanessa McHenry. On the VD Clinic Podcast, Vanessa says, We decided if you go by Michelle Remembers, Canadian Satan is less threatening and infinitely more boring than the Satan of the U.S. or Scandinavia. Do you think that's true, or is Canadian Satan a genuine threat? Or if Canadian Satan isn't a threat... Is he even interesting? Now, I read Michelle Remembers back in the mid-80s, and Michelle Remembers has to do with uh, repressed memories of satanic ritual abuse, and a lot of people really took that shit to heart and used it as, like, defenses in court cases, like, well, obviously this person has been abused by Satan fuckers, and that's why... They ate their brother's lungs. You know, stuff like that. When we get into the realm of Canadian Satan, I envision a dark sort of being the ruler of hell who immediately apologizes for you being there. <laughs> oh, sorry you're in hell, eh? Um... <laughs> I mean, I know it's totally your fault, but still, I should have picked up the place before you got here, and I'm I'm extremely sorry. I don't know if it's true or not, but in Canada, in the court system, if somebody says, I'm sorry, after committing a crime, that cannot be used as an expression of guilt. I think that's true. I don't know if it's true, but it sounds great. But, you know, internet, I saw it on Reddit. What the fuck do I know? Um <laughs> So is Canadian Satan a genuine threat? Probably no more than Bob and Doug McKenzie or the dudes off Letter Kenny. Is Canadian Satan interesting? I think he I think that he is interesting in the respect that you could probably talk your way out of hell. You could probably just like put up a couple of good points and they'd be like, Oh yeah, you're totally right. Uh <laughs> sorry, eh? You should totally be on that elevator up to heaven so that's what i think about canadian satan is he a threat probably not could you get out of canadian hell oh yeah in a heartbeat <laughs> in a fucking heartbeat but you'd have to have like some kind of passport i have nothing to add to that <laughs> fair enough well, you know what? Thank you all so much for your questions. Don't forget, you can hit us up with questions for Ask the Goat anytime. You know, when you run into a weird situation or your brain won't shut up while you're trying to get to sleep and you wonder, golly, what would X and Cootie say about this? Type that question up. Send it our way. And that's going to do it for this episode of Kiss the Goat. 
As always, we want to thank Legion Podcasts for hosting and distributing the show. And from the bottom of our dark, shriveled hearts, thank you for listening. And while you're here on the Internet, which is, in my head, an actual physical location, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the Legion Podcasts YouTube channel. And there's tons of content, and new stuff gets tossed up there all the time. All it takes is a click to subscribe, and you can immerse yourself in all the glorious shows Legion has available. And if you're inclined to grab some exclusive content, why don't you sign up for the Legion Podcast Patreon? For less than the price of a cup of goat blood per day, you can receive exclusive shows and groovy content from all sorts of podcasts on the network. It's really not that expensive for the amount of stuff you get in return. Look it up on Patreon and get up in that Patreon club. When are we going to do a Patreon show, X? Trust me, it's in the works. But I'm thinking sometime around the holidays? <laughs> oh, we'll see. No promises. But it's definitely rolling around in my head brain. Oh, honey, I can hear Stephanie down in the cellar. She's laughing. No, wait, she's crying. Nope, she's laughing. Okay, I can't tell what she's doing, but it sounds horrid. Fine, fine. I'll let her out. I just hope she doesn't start trying to rip our throats out with her bare teeth after being driven insane by movies about girls who fall in love with cowboys or in Christmas and angels and stuff like that. Oh, God, that would drive me crazy. Hell, it has. We covered Sweet Home Alabama a few years ago. I bled for days. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll go open the cellar door. Till next time, my name is X. And I'm Cootie. Hail, Hail Satan. Satan. Damn it. Cootie, Stephanie came up the stairs and now she won't let go of my ankle. We'll kick her off. She's trying to eat my shoe. Cootie, get in here. Hey, hey, Stephanie. Stephanie, get off his leg. Oh, oh, she's humping your knee. Bad, bad, Stephanie, down. At least get video! Nito Baba. 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 My left nostril blows vape down, but my right nostril blows vape up. <laughs> Did you say nostril? I said nostril. Nestral. I don't know what a nestral is. It's a type of dragon? No, that's a thestral. Fuck. It's an opera singer? In my penis. Johnson was not stable on her feet, and she reportedly... God damn it. That was even... Did you hear that? I was like talking to dogs right there. <laughs> Just... Ah! Uh, <laughs> Alright. Where the fuck? Okay, wait, okay. Yes, I have it now. Thank you so much. In November 2020, Johnson was arrested after... T arrested? <laughs> she was arrested in Kerrville. Goddamn. <laughs> Let's shit the bed. Let's just take vowels out of this fucking show completely, because why the hell do we need them? I'm obviously not drunk enough. Coming back in three, two... You're muted. This whole blooper reel is going to be saying you saying I'm fucking muted. That's all there is fucking that. to it. <laughs> it sounds like a story that'll be retold from the pulpits of Penescot... Pe Three, two... Am I fucking muted? You are not fucking muted. Good. Jesus. Three, two... I need more fucking beer, please hold. You get more beer, I will drink more wine. I need to wear fucking pewter spectacles and a, and a, and a funky hat. Mmm. That sounds hot. Does it? Mm hmm I don't think it does. Oh, uh, and Savalas. <laughs> right. Well, not to mention, this is the second movie in a row that features Alita Valley as in a, in a supporting role. God damn it. Why is this hard tonight? <laughs> Drinking and farming and planting. And <laughs> Let me try to deliver that line again, shall I? Okay. Now, X and I took a different approach to watching Lisa and the Devil. A lot of times we have a 
difficult time remembering the names of characters or the actual chron chronology. Chron well, Is this how this show's gonna go? It didn't make any fucking sense to me, but I thought, well, what? God damn it. <laughs> For the rest of the year. <laughs> Right. So while oh, three, two. So <laughs> don't look at me like that. So while old dude, shit. So while old dude goes off to take a bath, pretty later. Uh, yeah, I just said pretty later. So what? Pretty later, Hosen. Why is this so hard? Three, two. Wait, I'm burping. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let me uh, flip my shit around here. Because I'm a shit flipper. Shit flipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. Look who's picked up the... Three, two, fuck. Why well, can't I talk tonight? Oh, it may be the beer. Okay. I was also pretty amazed that... I don't know. I think maybe we get to see him for like two minutes. Two... I'm sorry. Jesus, but two seconds, not two minutes. Interestingly enough, there is another cut of Lisa and the Devil called House of Exorcism. And that version includes new, ver new footage with, like, a priest. Fuck, let me take that over, because ver footage. And wait, because I haven't come up with those points, and I need to pee. <laughs> I was just about to ask. <laughs> no. <laughs> let me go pee and give me a couple of minutes. In the meantime, it's time for the multiverse's favorite form of verbal interaction, Ask the Goat, where we answer your questions and we question your answers. Is that right? You question our answers. God damn it. Let's do that again. Why do I suck at my own show? Fuck. <sighs> okay. Jesus. <laughs> Three. Fuck. Three. Fuck. My favorite boy band. Mm. Three. Fuck. <laughs> Where was I? Okay. <laughs> Where was I? Jesus Christ. In the meantime, wait. Fuck. I need to count myself in. Okay. Three. Two. You can also follow us on Twitter and on, on the I just, Twitter. I just said you, I don't, to the three, to the, a bouncy C, two, one. As always, we want to thank Legion Podcast for hosting and distributing the show, and from the bottom of, but, <clears throat> yep, 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 for less than the price of a cup of, cu a cup of, cu <laughs> we're almost done, right? We are almost done. Right, Okay. Three, two, for less than the price of a cup of blood goat per day, you can receive Stop. exclusive... Blood goat? Blood... Did I say blood goat? You said blood goat. God fuck, fuck <laughs> me, Jesus duck. Okay. <laughs> Jesus duck? Fuck a doodle do. <laughs> three, two...